by the time you finish this video you will have moved all of your um, all the objects you want the player to click on and when you click on them they will go back to their original position so if I press play I can show you what I mean so I've put this truck the um, train up here and now it moves to where it's meant to go so this is basically the core mechanic of your game now I've got quite a few things hidden around the shop but you get the idea so every single item that you've hidden somewhere will snap back to its original position so I hope you enjoy this one this is the core part of the game everything else from here on in is pretty much the icing thanks so here is the project that we made at the end of the last tutorial so if I press play on this we've got our scene if I click inside and if I click and drag my mouse doesn't move so that's we just set everything up ready to go we've got our assets where we want them to be in the finished scene so I'm going to press escape to get out of that or I can press the stop button up here okay so now what we're going to do is we're going to set up our game so that if we have an object somewhere on the screen the player can click it and it'll go somewhere else on the screen because that's essentially how this game will work to do that we're going to need to make a new blueprint so if you go to your content drawer and make sure you're in your blueprints folder so you might be in your content folder double click to get into your blueprints folder you've already got the two blueprints that you've already made your game mode base and your player controller right click and go new blueprint class we're going to base it on the actor parent class call it bp underscore and i'm going to call it hidden object and just press enter on that that will place it in here you can double click on it to open it so we're in here we'll have a quick look around your viewport is where you'll put the things that you'll see on your screen um, then you've got some different areas that can contain code and on the left hand side we've got some other things that we're going to be adding to as well uh, but for now why don't we actually add what we call is a static mesh actor to this blueprint so you just stay on this screen I'm just going to minimize this you don't need to do this but you'll notice every one of our actors that is currently on the screen the wreath bow 2 is a static mesh actor the trees are static mesh actors so I'm going to go back to our um, hidden object now so what we're going to do is we're going to add a static mesh component to this BP hidden object so I'm just going to press add here and there is static mesh so click on that and for now I am going to choose a static mesh um, you don't necessarily have to but it just makes it easier if we can see what's happening so I'm going to scroll through here and find something in the list of static meshes that we imported from Kenny's assets and I'm going to choose something that's just one static mesh by itself that I'm going to want to move around so this lights green is a fine example so I put it here you'll notice at the beginning it is set here in 000 and the rotation is 00, zero and the scale is 111 so I'm just going to save that and now what I'm going to do is I'll minimize it back to our main screen I'm going to go to my content drawer here is my BP hidden object I'm just going to drag it and put it in our scene because one just because it's in the content drawer doesn't mean it's in our viewport uh, so I'll just uh, get rid of that now you see it's down here I'll just move it a little bit and you'll see now in the outliner it's called bp underscore hidden object and you'll see there it has a location and if I move that around you'll see the numbers change uh, so it's somewhere in my world now what I want to do is when the player clicks on that I want it to go somewhere else in the world and that's the basic functionality of what we need to set up so to do that we're going to need to go back to our blueprint so if I go to my content drawer and double click on my BP hidden object this is where the magic is going to happen now the first thing we're going to need to do is create something called a variable now if you've never done programming before then you might not know what a variable is 
So think of a variable as being like a container that can hold something and can hold all different things. But normally uh, each container can only hold a particular type of information. So variables are listed here and the computer uses variables to keep track of information. So I'm just going to press plus beside the variable and I'm going to change the type of variable in this case to transform. So if you can do that, press plus, change the variable type to transform. That new var zero isn't a very meaningful name, so I'm just going to change that to uh, final transform. That will do. So we're going to, we've created a variable. Its name is final transform. The type is of type transform. So once again, you don't have to do this, but if I just minimize this, you'll remember every object in our game has a type of transform. It has a location, which has an X, Y, Z value, a rotation, which has an X, Y, Z value, and a scale, which has an X, Y, Z value. So when we create a variable of type transform, it's something that's storing those basically nine numbers for us. So I'm going back to my blueprint now. So we have a variable of type final transform. Think of that as a box with the label final transform on the outside. Inside it, we're storing basically that set of nine numbers, the XYZ location, the XYZ rotation, and the XYZ scale. Over here on the details panel, because we've selected that variable, it's all changed. It's telling us the name of it, the type, you can enter a text description in there if you want. There's a whole pile of other options, but you'll notice right at the bottom, it wants to know what we want the default value to be. And it's saying it can't do it till we compile the blueprint. So if I compile the blueprint, there it is there. So the default value at the moment, and we can change that if we want to whatever values we like, um, but the default values are these. I'll put it back to zero, zero for now, zero, zero, 0, 0, 0, and scale of 1. So that's good. So we've set that variable. Now we have to do something with it. So to do that, uh, I'm going to go to your event graph. Now, Unreal has, the makers of Unreal have set, it us, set us up with three different types of event graphs, which are commonly used in making games. Uh, begin play, actor begin overlap and tick. But we actually want a different one. So if you can just right click there and I want you to search for actor on release. And this is the one we want event actor on released. So I'll just just uh, wait a couple of seconds for you to find that. So once you found it, click on it. This gives you this new um, new event. I might just drag it down so we've got our own little space for it so we're not getting in the way of that. So this is a visual programming language that Unreal have developed called Blueprints. And now what we're going to do is we're going to tell that actor when the player, when the player has clicked on this actor, we want to move the transform location to this final transform variable. So I'm just going to click and drag that uh, node, sorry, that um, pin, the exec pin, and I'm going to search for transform. So we want to set actor transform. Now I've got to tell it what to set it to. We're going to set it to this variable. So click and drag that out here, choose get final transform, and then just uh, drag that into there. So this is saying after the player has released the button on this actor, change the transform of self to whatever's in this variable. Now it's okay if you don't completely understand that. I'm pretty sure by the end of this process you will understand it. But for now I'm going to just press compile. I'm going to save it. Um, I'm going to close that. So now we've got this object here and its current XYZ location is negative 1, 3, 30, 20. If I press play, hopefully when I click on that, it will move it to somewhere else on the screen. Yes, it moved it over here where we can't see it, but that's OK. So basically, we've just got the functionality working of what we need to do. Now we've just got to make it work for all these objects on our screen. 
and um, that's probably it's a little bit time consuming more than tricky now that we've done the basics but let me show you how to do that so uh, the first thing I might do is we've actually got this green um, the, the, light, the green light strung up here and we've got um, a particular location and um, scale that we want it set to so uh, I might just copy and paste those to notepad so the X location is that the Y location is that the Z location is that the rotations are all at zero so I won't bother copying those but the scale is 1.65.942 blah 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 and that one all right so I've copied all that now what I'm going to do is I'll just get rid of minimize that I'm going to move this to where I would like to hide it in the game so I might even uh, rotate it a little bit I sort of make, make it look like it's hard, partially buried in the uh, in this just like sand in the snow. Not to be able to see it. It's under the snow. I might just rotate it a little bit more. All right, so that can be. Oh, that's probably still a little bit too hard to see. Move it up a bit. Move it up and then rotate it some more. It's probably better. Uh, the other thing is, I think I've got some grid snap on. So I'm just see this. This is enabling snapping a grid when dragging objects around. I'm going to unsnap. I'm going to not snap it, just so I can get a little bit more control here. All right. Now, if I press play, there it is. That's not too bad. And if I click on it, it goes all the way over there. Now, what I want to do is change that location to be the same as the values that I copied and pasted. So uh, to do that, click on your blueprint. So make sure BP hidden object is set. And here's the current transform information. Now that we made that variable, it should be listed here but it's not and that is because I didn't look at all the options so let's go back to a hidden object here and one thing we can do is make it in fact if I click on here we want to make it instance editable so every single that means every single object that is of type BP hidden object can have its own um, own values for this and I think that might be all we need. We'll double check. So if I compile that now and save it, I minimize it now over here. I'll click on that one again. Here it is, final transform. And I'm going to try changing it to these values. That's the X location. I'm just copying and pasting that one. And setting the scale to be what the other one was. All right, so I just copied and pasted all those values. So now if we uh, save all that and press play, if I click on that, Let's actually put it right there and to just to be certain if I am just going to delete this one and if I press play and there it goes up there all right so that's the basic functionality of how the game works I'm going to show you how to do a few more um, so let's say we want to work on maybe this tree right so in my sample one I have the tree sticking out of the roof here so um, what we're going to do to make another one we're going to drag another hidden object onto our page now you'll see that it actually looks like um, 
the, the lights. So we have to change our static mesh. So if I click on, so once, so make sure you've selected the new BP hidden object, and you'll see it's called BP hidden object two. I might actually rename this as well. It's good practice. Um, where does it say rename? Edit, rename, and I'm just going to call it uh, tree. So BP underscore hidden object tree just makes it a little bit more meaning for, for, for me next time. And whoops, I'll go back to this one. And I might also rename that one while I'm here. Edit, rename, and I'm going to BP hidden underscore hidden object underscore, and I'll call it green lights makes it a bit easier when I want to know what's what. Alright, so let's select this one. What we want to do is we change the static mesh to the tree. Now, there are lots of tree things here and that's fine. This is the tree I want, but what you'll notice about this tree is it doesn't have the star on it and that's because it's a separate static mesh. Now we could add a second static mesh to this blueprint, but I actually think it's probably a tad easier if we just select both of these and we create a merged actor for the two of them. So I've selected both of them. You can see they're both selected here and I'm going to go actor and I'm going to go merge actors, merge. And I'm going to just put it um, actually, I might make a new folder for my merged actors, but you don't have to put it there. You could have just put it back in Kenny Christmas. And I'm going to call this one uh, uh, Tree Decorated Merged and save. So that's actually now put that in our uh, content drawer. And I'm just going to save all. So now uh, when I choose this one, instead of using the static mesh of just the tree and it doesn't have the star, I'm going to uh, go tree decorated merge. So I've got all that. Uh, the other thing I'm going to do now is I am going to get the location information for this tree. Now, because these are, uh, this is not a merged um, asset, we've actually got both assets. So the numbers I end up generating may not be exactly right, but that's okay. Uh, here's the details panel. Oh, here's how I lost it. There you go. Transform information. So I'm going to delete what's there. Copy and paste the X, Y, Z. Zero, zero, zero is fine. The scale is 0.8 for each one. So I've copied all that down. So now I'm going to move this tree up. So it's sticking out of the roof of the house. I'm going to need to make it smaller might just do that by changing the numbers here and I'm going to rotate it actually keep going move it some more Oops. and I might need to rotate it the other way make it so it's like sticking out and sometimes it might help if you move your view around see so yeah, I wasn't even close to where it's got to be yet so I'm right clicking to drag my point of view and using the arrow keys uh, to move around in the view actually maybe that could be sticking out of the chimney I oh, know I might just leave it sticking out of the roof like it's uh... I 
Now I still need to do a bit more work on that, but you kind of get the idea. Whoops. Hopefully you'll be able to see the yep. So now the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the final transform variable and I'm going to copy those values that I wrote before. So the X, the Y, the Z, and 0.8 for each of the scales. All right, so now if I save all of that and press play, You've got your Christmas tree. I, I could make the angle a bit better, probably make it a bit bigger, but if I click on it, uh, looks like it's gone in exactly the right spot, but let's just double check that. Let's just delete this one now. I'll delete the star as well. If I press play again, yep, perfect. So it's gone to exactly the right location. So that's excellent. So we've currently got two objects that when you click on them, they go to the right place. So your job now is to go through and um, so let me just outline the steps again so the first thing is you drag on a new hidden object and I suggest you rename it so if I want to do one for the wreath I'll drag it on and I'm going to call this one I'm going to rename it and I'm going to call it uh, wreath one and then you need to change the static mesh to the wreath or to whatever it is and keep in mind if you if it's an asset that has two different um, static meshes on it an easy way to to work with it is to select them both and then go to actor and choose merge actors merge and I'll just put in my Merge Actors folder and I'm going to call it Wreath. Save. Whoops, I didn't put it in my Merge Actors folder, so I'm just going to drag it in there. All right, save all. Just want to double check in my Merge Actors folder. I've got both of those now. Uh, and then I can change that static mesh. So click on the static mesh and change it to Wreath merged well, I think I just called it wreath didn't I so there we go I've got the whole thing now we grab the X Y Z and all the different location transforms now the reason you can't see them it just says multiple values is because we've selected both static meshes so just select the one and this has actually been grouped so we'll need to ungroup them group ungroup and just select the X, Y, Z of the main one. Where did it go? Oh, I collapsed it. There we go. X, Y, Z. The rotation is different, so I'm going to copy that as well. and 0.8 for the XYZ of the, um, the scale. All right, so now I am going to move this sucker to where I want it to be. For where it's hidden, maybe we'll just, uh, maybe we could put it on one of these trees back here. Rotate it. Once again, you might need to rotate your view. So right click to rotate your viewpoints uh, and then the arrow keys to move around. Uh, I use the FN key and up and down to go if I need to like move my view up or down as well. Um, that's probably not the best, but let's... Uh, Let's just leave it there for now. 
And the last thing I need to do is put its final transform location in here. I think you should copy the uh, degree sign, just copy the numbers. And these were all 0.8. All right, so let's save all of that and let's see if this one works. So it's way back there. I didn't put it in the right spot. I press play. I, I hit it and I moved it. Um, I'm just going to delete the old one. Now you'll see that it didn't, um, that spot is a shadow. If you rebuild the lighting, that will go away. If I just hit play, didn't quite go the way I wanted. And that was because, um, when I got the X, Y, Z and the rotation values, I did it only of the bottom part of the wreath. I didn't do it of both of them. So there are a couple of ways I could fix that. One is just to manually play around with the numbers until you're happy. So you click on this and you would just fiddle with these numbers until you're happy. The other thing you could do is actually go to the merged actors and drag your wreath out, put it exactly where you're happy with it so just say it was there so now we're dealing with exactly the same thing so then in theory if I use those numbers and the rotation is at zero scale is at one uh, so if I now then so I don't need any of those so now if I go to this one and change my final transform to those values, it should be right. So that problem just came in because we were using, um, we weren't using exactly the same object, we were just using the bottom of the object. Alright, so let's save all that. I'll just delete this other, hit play. Yeah, and then that's perfect. So, so that's an, a way to troubleshoot that. But as I said, you could have just done it by trial and error by changing the numbers to your happy. And of course, I still need to move this a little bit, but you get the idea. It's all a little bit fiddly, that part. Um, and the other thing I just want to show you to get, if you ever want to rebuild the lighting, you just go build, um, build lighting only. And sometimes it can take a while, but that'll fix any of the weird shadowing and, and so forth that you might come across. That didn't fix that shadow. Oh, it's still going. There you go. In the bottom, it's still saying building lighting. So, so it does take a while. So that's so. What I want you to do now is to go away and um, basically move all your. Uh, there you go. That lighting is fixed now. Move all of your um, objects to where you want them to be. Drag out a new. BP hidden object for every object that you want to be hidden in your game and then get the coordinates right and get it so that when you press play and you click on all the hidden objects they move to where they're supposed to be and then after that the next step will be that's the main core game loop sorted then we're going to have to get it to detect when the game's over and so forth so I will leave you to go do that uh, just before you go do that, I've just got one other tip for you. You might have noticed that when you were in this view here, this little uh, sphere gets in the way, and it, you don't obviously you don't see it when you press play; it's gone. But it's a little bit annoying, so I'm just going to show you how to get rid of that. So go into your blueprint, your hidden object blueprint. Just drag your static mesh actor onto def default scene root. And this will make this the new root of your scene and then that just disappears. It's just um, the default um, hidden uh, object that they show. And the reason it's there is because if you didn't have a static mesh in here, you wouldn't see anything. You wouldn't know where it is in the viewport. So that's why Unreal puts it there. But in this case, we don't need it. So when you do that, you'll see it's going to make it a little bit easier to move things around and see where they are and so forth. Um, because you don't have that big ugly sphere sitting there so you might want to do that and then um, and then I'll make that 
bit easier. So I'll let you go do that. Thank you.